Expedition Overland's Great Pursuit is proudly presented by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. In association with Patriot Campers and PCOR Systems. In part by Stanley. Ward. Icon Vehicle Dynamics. Max Tracks. Garmin. CBI Off-Road Fabrication. Equipped. Aviator Paramotor. The Power of Red Arc. Magpul. We have arrived home and for the last few weeks been very busy preparing for a cross-country flight from Canada to Mexico, if possible. It's been a daunting challenge, with the greatest factor being lack of experience. We're going to have to be making decisions every day. The planning stages has happened over months. With our Mexico trip and training combined, the three of us only have about 13 hours of flight time in the air. And despite us trying to fly as much as possible now that we're home, those hours have been hard to rack up due to the collective workload of the journey. What we do know is that higher elevations pose greater challenges to flight and risk to us rookie pilots. So we have scoured air charts and elevation maps and plotted mountains to avoid and ground elevation targets that we think we can fly from. Cross countries are now the focus of our flights, so we can determine flight ranges and travel times of the vehicles and how the two relate. Ty and I are now flying together as much as possible to get our communications and teamwork dialed in the air. And then really you're just kind of looking for any kind of leaks or kind of seals starting to fail. In reach, on. Radio, on. Air to ground. Comms, in the ear, grad. Here to help us is our new team member, Tanner Johnson. He's a friend of mine and a true asset to the team. So far, there isn't anything this farm kid from Wyoming can't do. So today, I am going to be driving the Tundra, chasing these guys as we head towards White Sulphur. Um, basically keeping track of them on the map, in the truck, and where they're at at all times. Copy, we have a visual on you. We'll be taking off and staying east of you, headed over Manhattan on our way out. Copy that, thank you. This cross country is also significant as it's at a substantially higher elevation than our cross country in Glamis. Glamis is roughly at sea level, and today's flight the density altitude corrected, it's the equivalent of 6,300 feet. An exponential difference to how the motors and wings will perform. Uh. Ouch. What in the Sam Hill? I haven't had this much trouble in like two months. Some days are just not your day. Maybe that's my deal today. Once he failed again, and I, I looked at my fuel, and it's like I've already burned up that much fuel. I so I, I, I need to land and refuel and get ready to go again with him if it works. There we go, there's enough wind there. Should have been ready right there. The flight is planned for takeoff in Manhattan, and we are to set down some 45 miles away in Ringling, Montana.
Today is a big day as it's a proving ground for the concept of vehicles and flight moving together. This is our first major cross country over remote terrain. It's a bit intimidating as we are now on our own without instructors. As we fly over the Horseshoe Mountains, we are constantly looking for areas to land in the event of an engine out. Both Ty and I have experienced engine outs already. We're really missing Brian right now. It sure would be cool to do this all together, but he's in Maui training on his own. He'll be back in Montana in just a few short weeks for the start of the expedition. The tundra is having a difficult time keeping up with us, and we lose comms with them in the canyon, just north of the Bridger Mountain Range. Ty and I circle for a good 15 minutes trying to reach the tundra and eventually realize we now no longer have enough fuel to safely complete the mission. So we are forced to land early and wait for the toy hauler. Wow, we flew over the mountains and look back at where we came over. I mean. A quick refuel has us back in the air, but the winds and thermic air is increasing with the warming day. remaining 10 miles of our flight here is becoming scary and very bumpy. Ty hits some strong gusts on his way in and somehow lands his PPG in reverse. In high winds, the wings just want to fly and Ty's wing decides to take him for one last ride directly into the hay bales. I just like quadrupled my amount of experience in turbulence. So that's a win and I walked away from it, learning it. I can tell I have a lot to learn still. Well, that was silly. <laughs> Weird gust caught me right at the end and just pushed me far right. Landing was good, but then the wing just wanted to go and I couldn't break it because it landed right on these hay bales. So it was just, it was going to be airborne no matter what. Man, it's hilarious. You just don't know what the heck you're going to find out here. But I'm glad we had a good spot to put it down. With some solid training under us now, it's time to focus on something we have been working on behind the scenes for over eight months. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to welcome you to Detroit. First, Tanner needs to go to Detroit to get it. Tanner here flew into Detroit last night up bright and early because I was just handed these for this the new gladiator with the truck finally back in the shop it's time to tackle the build for starters, the Jeep Gladiator is possibly the coolest truck to hit the overland scene in years, like many years. And it boasts a lot of benefits. It comes stock with 33s and with a mild lift it can accommodate 37s. The truck has solid axles and lockers built in. Payload is best in class at 1,700 pounds, 600 pounds higher than our Tacoma. This is going to be a fun build as we just find this truck to be interesting and cool. That's why we bought it. We knock out the easy stuff first, with building out the easy on roof rack with signature alu boxes and a rigid 50 inch combo under slung. Then we pull off a quick trip to Salt Lake City to pick up our mystery box of epicness fresh off the plane from Australia. My close friend Travis Swanson lends a hand with his construction equipment to set the box down in the shop. Travis has been a great friend of mine for years and we have served on the local search and rescue teams for the past 12. The biggest modification will be to the rear. And this massive box sitting in our shop is for this very special day. My good friend Justin from Exploration Outfitters has come up from Oklahoma to help with the install. Hopefully our buddy Matt will also get in today on the plane, but he's working through a weather delay in Texas. 
This is Justin from Exploration Outfitters. He's come all the way from Oklahoma to help us put this mysterious box of goodness on the back of our Gladiator. It's no mystery, it's a P-Core. It says P-Core. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> kind of gives it away. <laughs> so we only have a certain amount of time. And you're thinking... Till midnight. Midnight. By midnight By tonight, midnight, we, will we have need to have this thing on. The first four-door Gladiator P-Core. The yeah. first four-door Gladiator P-Core. Dude, sign me up. Let's do it. We have loved the P-Core on our Tundra. And when Patriot Campers suggested one for the Gladiator, it was a hot yes decision. The P-Core systems have been the most functional upgrades to our trucks ever. Huh, cool. It's like Christmas for kids. Yeah, it's that Terrible. present that sits under the tree and it's just right there, but you can't open it. You know what you want, you know what it is. Clearing all the electrical off the top of the frame, and off the back of the frame, moving it all back to the center cross member. This is where we'll come in, we'll rewire everything and secure it. That way it's off, out of the way, and back to really useful. Now we're wiring in the tail lights for the rear boxes and the headache rack. Perfect. So we broke down our color codes. We know each, which wires are our turn signals, our reverse lights, our running lights, uh, our ground. And we wired them into a Deutsch six-way connector that will wire into the P-Core system. So it'll be plug and play and we can have our lights up there. With a tray on the back, my oldest son Cyrus begins his lessons in aftermarket installs. And this task right here is his first start to finish install. Cyrus and I then prep the worn winches that will be mounted in the front and the rear of the Gladiator. We continue to prep the trucks late into the night as time is running short. We'll take it for a drive, but we gotta ask the police officer if we can drive without a uh, license plate. <laughs> Day two on the P-Core install, and Matt just showed up in time, finally, after plane delays. Better late than never. Better late than never to put the canopy on. We're just gonna do a rough fit. One, <laughs> two, three. This is the light side. Yeah. Two days, two big days, the end of it now, and we got a P-Core on a Gladiator, thanks to these guys. Wow. <laughs> what an ass. <laughs> what an ass. <laughs> <laughs> One and a quarter. We've got a few more things to go, obviously. we got the rails to put on. We've got to mount the winch head wherever we decide, the controller, wherever we decide to put that. But all in all, we have a P-Core. 
put on the Gladiator in record time. Driven. And driven. Cool. Yeah, we're already starting to do other stuff now. Yep. So All ridges have been put on. I have a lot to thanks. A lot to thanks for these, my ways. You're welcome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Got my turds twisted. Got my <laughs> Everything is going well. The team is getting through a big push with a great positive attitude. If we stay on this track, I think we'll have a good chance for success. On Saturday, July 14th, I received a phone call from my deputy friend, Eric Frankie, in regards to a rescue mission occurring on Mount Cowan, south of Livingston, Montana. This was no ordinary SAR call. It was a rescue for one of our own. Actually, three of them. Three of our top heli rescue team members had been involved in a mountain rock slide accident while scrambling toward the summit. One was in critical condition, and the other, my friend Travis, was missing. I was sent to the SAR shack to await orders with Eric, and it was there, just an hour or so later, that we heard a helicopter transmission confirming a third individual was found and was deceased on the mountain. Our dear friend Travis was gone. Personally, my life has changed and having to work through the grief of this is going to be brutal. But Travis wouldn't have us sit around and wallow. He would tell us to get our butts in gear, no excuses, ever. And so we do. But under the weight of a major awakening and a firm mortality check for all of us. The next phase of our adventure is danger close. And despite our grief, we must be strong and keep moving. I asked Ty to keep a special eye on me as it's going to take a while to get my head back to 100% again. Adding a new connection to the term, wingman. Next, Dark Horse Customs takes the lead with the suspension and mounting of the Grabber X3 tires. If a paramotor goes down somewhere, it's going to be this truck that goes and gets them. Final installs are completed on the Jeep with only days left to go. A new prototype raised air intake is installed from AEV. A new Easy On exclusive rooftop tent and awning is mounted up and a wide range of small projects are completed. The build has been one of our most fun builds to date. And the truck could not have turned out any cooler. So after a little thought, we name it after the Viking god Odin, in honor of Travis's Norse heritage. A week before departure, we experiment with one of the latest technologies to the PPG world, a fuel-injected system. It's exciting, but we know that they are untested at higher altitudes as of this time. And the technology is really in its infancy. New fuel injection system that Alex installed last night and today. Um, we're just kind of giving it a run through real quick. I'm excited about it. It started on the second pull, which was not usually the case when it was carbureted, which was really nice. So let's see what we can get figured out here. Very interested to see what your guys' real world uh, results are. There's no getting around the fact that there's less air up here. Right. So um, right. that's just that's just a limitation that we have. Um, okay. 
I'll be very interested to see what you guys do at this elevation and, and the kind of flying that you guys are going to do. So, um, could be really good. Good morning. It is 4.55 and I am almost on my first coffee. And it's about time to do a quick shakedown run, a big run of show, as they say. We take the three trucks out, really shake this gladiator down, um, take the PPGs out, so Ty, Brian, and Claire are all gonna be in the air. Uh, Kurt Williams lands Tuesday night, it's Monday right now. So Kurt flies down to, uh, or flies up to Bozeman tomorrow night, and then we leave Wednesday morning, following day. Confidence level is medium. You look refreshed though. Do I? Yeah. I got uh, four and a half hours of sleep. We're gonna meet Ty and Tanner at the gas station at 5.30. It's uh, 4.55 right now in the morning. And uh, we're gonna yeah, get going here. We've got a big day today, full test run. We've got new EFI systems, electronic fuel injection that we're gonna do our first cross country on after not testing them very much. It's got us a little nervous, but we, I mean, we just don't really have any other options. We have to just go for it. Do you guys also think this is gonna be a good day? Oh, this is my 1 a.m., so. <laughs> still, still ready to rock though. Let's do this. <laughs> Ready for your close up? <laughs> we'll find out. I need some more coffee in me. Where's the third PPG? Oh no. Ty's got it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Too early to be thinking outside the box there. <laughs> With a quick setup, we start going through the motions. But Ty's motor is just not working right. What happened to Ty? It's really weird, man. My motor uh, was warming up fine, and then all of a sudden it just kind of sputtered out and died. It started again, it ran fine for a minute, ran it up to full speed, brought it back down, and it died again. Went through that motion several times and now it's just not working, period. Your call, man. Well, the morning did not go well. We are uncertain with the EFI systems right now, so we need to just, we're gonna go back. We're gonna call it, reset, look into the problems, and run again tomorrow. Hopefully we can get everything worked out before the trip. Otherwise, we're gonna have to scramble to go to plan B and go back to carbs. And then we gotta test those again. Test those again, because none of us are <laughs> Oh, and yeah, we're leaving in two experts. days. <laughs> yeah, we're leaving in two days, so. Oh, well, we better get to scooting. Yeah, that's what we live for, it's the adventure. Let's figure it out. Problem solving. <laughs> Here we going, boys. What are we doing? So we're gonna go do a quick test flight. Make sure everything's good to go on a neighbor of Clay's place, a good friend of ours, Rob Biggs. So um, excited. It's a gorgeous yeah. night to do it. Wind kind of died down, storm rolled through. We Let's got, go. We got time. Let's roll.
The guys are out here practicing at sunset. I'm not up in there because my motor needed to be uh, torn down and fixed. The EFI whole entire injection system rattled loose and so we spent uh, a day rebuilding that and re-loctiting it and making sure it's set in there. O-rings are good so I'm so so stoked on the weather tonight. It's just a gorgeous evening. Couldn't ask for better air. Beautiful sunset. Counting our blessings right now and Man, I wish I could be there. Here's, here's Ty. With both of us in the air, I experience intermittent power and get a bad feeling about it for now. It just needs more testing, but time is almost out. It was a good flight, a tough first chance, but got off the ground. So I don't know, we still got stuff to figure out. Huh. Gotta inspect it real good tonight. I think we just got to continue to readjust our expectations of what this trip should be so that we have the best experience in the time that we have. Because that's what it's all about. We're on Earth for a short time, and when we get the chances to go do stuff like this, you just got to make the best of it. And maybe not everything's going to line out perfect, but you just got to make the best of it because it's uh, life short. So that's what we'll do. I'm going to keep my chin up. Keep moving. Later that night, we end up having an impromptu meeting on the expedition. I think with all the stuff happening, all the complexities and the failures, Travis's passing, etc., we just need to rework things. Gut checks are everywhere, and we end up going back to the drawing board. We'll tackle that in the morning. So through all of our discussions and looking at the, the trip as a whole, how things are going with the power paragliders, etc., we have decided that we're going to postpone our trip by one day. There comes a point when you got to make a decision on if leaving on the day that you determined actually builds more stress than it's worth, and that's what it was for us. So in addition, we also decide to revert back to carbs on the paramotors. We can see now how EFI systems will change paramotors in the future, but for this expedition, we need a proven system. The end result is that we rework our expeditions to throttle back on the PPGs and go back to our baseline passion. With Kurt on the ground now in Bozeman, he works diligently through the final route requests and problems to get the expedition back underway. Jesus, thank you so much for this opportunity, for this team that gets to go on and embark on a really neat adventure. And we just ask that your hand of safety and your hedge of protection would be around us the entire time, Lord. And Lord, we just are uh, so thankful for what you've done for us. And we just recognize that you've done so much for us in the past and you've continually guided our steps. And we just ask that you do the same thing on this trip as well. Uh, for all your glory, in Jesus' name, amen. So with that new plan established, we load up the family and the trucks and head off to the Whipsaw Trail in Canada, a trail that all of us have wanted to do for many years, but just haven't been able to get to yet. And so there is no time like the present. And with our newfound life direction, this seemed like just the thing to do. All right, so we're about eight miles from the trailhead out of Princeton here. We're going to enter and do the trail in a clockwise direction. So that's our game plan. We'll get down to the trailhead. That's where we'll air down, do all our last checks, make sure we have everything we need, and uh, lock it in the low range and go. We are at the trailhead of Whipsaw Trail. Um, just. I think we're about 10 kilometers outside of Princeton, BC, and it's time to air down the tires on all three trucks. I got a text from a good friend of mine who's done this before, and he said, What vehicles are you taking? And I told him all three, and he said, Good luck. So it should be interesting. I'm excited to head up the trail. 
I'm a little bit nervous because I haven't done a lot of technical off-roading, so um, yeah, it should be really interesting. But uh, everybody here is really great at giving directions, so I'm in capable hands, so it should be really, we'll see. <laughs> nervous laughter, insert here, <laughs> again. <laughs> Let's go! Whipsaw! Being out on the trail brings up the phrase, carpe diem, seize the day. There's something about being out here that brings you back to center. You having fun yet? Yeah, <laughs> already I kind of have fun, but not kind of a lot. I'm doing it, get my steps in. Did it. Woo! Who needs trucks? You need just run. So easy. Somehow, coming out here makes even big things feel a little smaller. And being out here has a magical way of bringing you back to the most important place. Yourself. On the side road. Mm -hmm. but they are oh. pretty good. They may be poisonous, I can't remember. What? My dad found a spot 200 yards that way, that's a little better. Sweet. It's this way. It's the shadow that makes me get Oh! <laughs> It's been a very difficult time, but difficult things are just what we do. That's not on the sacrifice. I'm so thankful for these great folks on our trip. Every one of them supported Rochelle and I and my family through a very, very difficult month. And I can't wait to hit the trail with them and spend time with people that I just love to death. <laughs> Burn them bugs away. I don't know.